Uh, yes, I'd like to ask, Ama. Yes, at the end of the um, your recent novel, uh, you said uh, something to the effect of marriage being the death of a person, of a woman, what could have been, of what what she could have been. I'd just like you to expand on that because I thought that was very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> I think that, I'd, I'd like to ask a gentleman a question, and that is, how long have you been in exile, and you know, how do you feel? How has it made you feel? Well, Thank you. I left my country first in, in 
Jewish and nationality because of political activities. And I could hardly travel unless I had a uh, from uh, reentry permit from the Department of the U.S. Department of Naturalization and Immigration and Naturalization. I uh, was able to go back to Haiti only after the fall of the Dubai dynasty in 1986. And although uh, I knew of the poverty of the country, I was shocked. I was really shocked by the luxury of the rich people who became richer and of and the, the misery of poor people who had become poor. And uh, exile, well, it is hard. You know, it is hard. I, uh, when I left Haiti, I had spent uh, 20 years in the Haitian army. And that's uh, really some people still can understand it. But uh, I was young, and uh, it was a kind of experience. And, uh, there, there were some advantages about it, like uh, knowing well the country from east to west and from south to north, and uh, having some kind of discipline in life. When I came, you first came here, I didn't know any English. I had to go back to school to learn English, Washington Irving School. And uh, I was already 40, uh, that in order to get uh, the equivalency for my diploma, which were in French, I had to go back, back to school. I worked for five years in a parking lot while going to school at night. And uh, after the end, I had uh, some courses at Hunter College, where we were coming in this morning. And, uh, I got my equivalency. I went to work for Fordham Prep, the prep school on the Fordham University campus in Bronx. And uh, I can say that exile, you know, this is a book in France. The, 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 uh, the last one I read was translated for it. And the title of it is The Old Nigger in Exile. So I wrote a lot about exile, but only two of my books had been translated into English. Camarade, the first one, Camarade, which is made of two French words, amour, love, and camarade, comrade. So it's a combination of comrade and love. And, uh, there is a bilingual edition of it by Capstone Press, and the work was translated by Anne Mary Mano, was Mary Mano, was an American poetess living in San Francisco. The other, other book, the collection of Creole poems, Christiba, uh, which means in uh, English, Slingshot. It has been translated by Jack Kirschman, a Marxist uh, poet, American poet living in San Francisco, the founder of the uh, Jack Kirschman Cultural Brigade in San Francisco. So exile has been, is never nice. It's never very good, but it's like life. It's both good and bad. The good things that, uh, well, I could live the country with my, my family, my wife, uh, who has been my companion for 40 years, and my children, three children, who came here very small, very young. The oldest was 10, and the youngest, five. The oldest is almost 40 now, and the youngest, 36. She's a medical doctor, uh, working at the uh, making research at Columbia University in New York and uh, practicing in the Harlem Hospital. And as you said, she kept her, she kept her name. Mm -hmm. She is Dr. Barak, not Dr. Irene, her husband. She's trying to read about that. Please. Yes, yeah. <laughs> But unfortunately, we don't know what to do sometimes. The children 
I would like to ask the panel if, if, is, if is there an African literary movement engulfing all African writers or most African writers and what are its elements and how has Islamic thought in Africa influenced literature in this century?
Oh, <laughs> <laughs>